Potsdamer Platz in Berlin. For 28 years, the square was divided by the Berlin Wall. But in the 1990s, it became Europe's largest building site. Here at the heart of the city, a new district was built from the ground up, with offices, shops, and apartments. A fragment of the old Esplanade Hotel was moved 75 meters to make room for Berlin's new skyscrapers. High-rise buildings here were normally solitary structures, integrated highlights in the surrounding landscape. As early as the 1920s, this was one of the defining features of the European skyscraper in comparison to the American one. The fact that the European skyscraper was supposed to possess a meaningful function within the urban landscape. Here, more than 100 meters up, the viewing platform at the top of architect Hans Kollhoff's red brick office tower gives visitors the chance to look across the city of Berlin. The Potsdamer Platz project was the subject of a great deal of controversy from the start. Hans Stimann and Hubertus Siegert witnessed the debates. Here at Potsdamer Platz, we clashed over our vision for the city and its future. In the end, the point of view that I supported in the building competition came out on top. In short, we decided to build a city district that would follow in the tradition of the European city, with well-defined streets and squares, streets and squares that would be accessible to the public. Both Daimler-Benz and Sony tried to sway city planners in favor of cutting-edge 21st century architectural design. These high-tech companies couldn't imagine returning to a model anchored in the 19th century, just as they were about to embark on the new millennium. The idea was so contrary to their corporate vision and strategy, so disturbing, that of course the sparks flew. I was a student in West Berlin, but had grown up in West Germany. When I came to Berlin, I was amazed at how open and empty everything seemed. It was a very compelling atmosphere. Then after the fall of the wall, suddenly it all changed. Suddenly all the empty spaces were going to be filled with new construction and building sites sprang up everywhere. That's how it seemed to me. Roberto Siegert recorded the construction boom in Berlin between 1996 and 2001 in his documentary film Berlin Babylon. A new government district was built for the new capital with a chancellery and parliamentary offices. The historic Reichstag building was renovated to house the German parliament, which moved from Bonn to Berlin in 1999. The new ribbon of government buildings jumps across the Spray River twice and was originally intended to cross it three times. The spatial arrangement makes it absolutely clear that the goal was to create a new link, a ribbon that would symbolically knit together not just the two halves of the city but also the two halves of the state. Because of its skyline, the city of Frankfurt am Main in western Germany has been dubbed Manhattan. More than 20 skyscrapers crowd the city's financial district. Frankfurt is the only German city that developed a high-rise silhouette. Not like Manhattan, but on a smaller scale, like Dallas. The tallest buildings in Dallas are 296 meters high. Completed in 1997, Germany's tallest building, the 259-meter Commerzbank Tower, tops the skyline in Frankfurt. Its bold and forward-looking design captured the spirit of new German architecture as the country headed toward the new millennium.